take a deep dive into Glide Pages. So if you're familiar with Glide and you've been building any kind of app with Glide, you can also build a web-based app using Glide Pages. Here we have a look at uh, just a few templates that they have. So they have this CRM, property manager, inventory, field sales, and delivery. You can build a uh, page, a Glide page, from an existing app that you have in there. So let's walk through how to do that. We're here at the Glide home screen, and as you see, you can, you know, start from a classic template down here, but these are the apps. So if you do want the Glide pages templates, make sure you hit view all. That'll take you to that first screen we're at. Now I've gone ahead and created this employee directory. As you can see, this employee directory was just the base Glide template, but I wanted to show you that you can take that if you have a mobile app and create a Glide page or web app version. So this is a, a pretty straightforward just employee directory and it only allows you to search. You can search members or employees and you can search locations. But what happens if you want to add in locations? and staff. That's not really convenient to do on a mobile setting. You can, but it's a whole lot more convenient to manage back at the office. That's where the pages come in. So let's take a look at how we'll take this basic app and create Glide pages. So back out on our main screen here with Glide, we can see this employee directory. Now we know that's there and we have all of our data existing. So we can go ahead and hit new project. And this time we're gonna choose a web page. Once you hit continue, you can call it whatever you like. And then go ahead and hit continue. From here, just as you would with the mobile apps, you can choose Google Sheets or Glide Tables. And depending on when you're watching this tutorial, Airtable may or may not be available, but for right now, we're gonna stick with Google Sheets. So we're gonna go ahead and hit Create Page. From there, you're gonna go ahead and select the appropriate file. For me, that's Employees 2021 here, and then hit Select. Now, when this creates the initial setup, you'll see it looks almost exactly the same as the mobile app. This is where Pages Power comes into play. We're gonna add in uh, an, an, a form to add locations and staff right here on the mobile, or right here on the web version of it. That way you can enter data a lot more seamlessly and it creates more interfaces. Now, this is just scratching the surface of all the different things that you can do with the web-based version of your app. So keep that in mind as you're working through. For now, let's take a look at how to add in a form to add staff members and locations. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and clean this up a little bit. When it came in, you just had this collection of staff. Now, if you are unfamiliar with how to use Glide, let's do a quick overview. So looking at this staff collection, first we see the search bar. In order for you to have the search bar, you're going to wanna to go under options and you can either turn it on or off if you don't want that feature available. Everything else we'll do is under general, but I like to point out that the search bar is under options. So from here, you're gonna to wanna to be sure that you have the appropriate source. If you've done all this from Google Sheets, just as we did, this should all come in alignment for you. Just as with the app, the mobile version, you can set up the different styles to however works best for your particular web, web app. From there, I'm not going to change anything else. I'm going to come down to the title bar and I want to add an action. So this will be empty. You can hit add an action and you'll get a button that appears right here. Now, as you can see, I've gone ahead and changed that title to add an employee. And then I've chosen all the way almost at the bottom to show a form screen. So once you select that, it'll ask you if you wanna do uh, current, main, small, or large. I chose the large overlay, and that's all you need to do. So let me go ahead and remove this other action. If you ever need to remove an action, just click on it and hit delete, and it will disappear. So from there, we need to adjust the form. To 
to do that, you click on the button. Now, as you can see, this came in defaulting to our sheet of locations, which isn't gonna work for us. We need staff. So we're gonna go ahead and click staff and you'll see everything pre-populated for that form. But we can make it a little bit more user-friendly. Come on over and hit the plus sign. And there's a couple fields here we want to swap out. So everything came in as text, including for our email, our location, and our manager. We want to have a dropdown available for location and for manager to help ease some of the entry when it comes to these, this form. And we also want to switch our email field to be email and not text. So I'm going to drag in the email entry and get rid of the text field. Then we can see we have email set up, but if any of this needs adjustment, just as you would with the mobile app side, you have all of these different columns available to you. So you can go ahead and select what's applicable. You can change these titles and add placeholders if need be, and then make them required or not. So the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and make the manager a choice field. So I'm gonna kind of drag it above just so that I can see what I'm working with. Delete out the manager, and this will show you when you're dragging in duplicate fields. That's very helpful <laughs> to keep you uh, only reusing the field one time as to not confuse your users. So now, because this is our manager, the value source we want to keep as the name to allow all employees to be an option of a manager, but we want the data to go into the manager field. So just keep that in mind when you're, uh, you know, adding in drop downs that your values, meaning the options you want to pick, align with where the data is going to go. In this case, we want to be able to choose any employee name, but we want that data to correspond to the manager column. And we're going to rename this manager. We'll make that one required as well. Next, we want to change the location. If this gets too confusing, you can always just hit the little X to delete it, add your plus sign, and then drag in a choice field. Now again, this came in as name, so let's go ahead and change that to location. The data is also going to go into location, and we're going to call that required and change this to office location. Okay. Now we have our name, but that's not really descript. We need the full name. So let's go ahead and call this full name and say first and last and make that required too. Title, we're just going to have to make everything required. Number isn't really descriptive, so let's call this employee number. Make that required. Image doesn't have a title, so let's go ahead and call this employee photo. Make that required. And then we're down to date of birth, and we'll just make that required as well. Perfect, now our form is all set. To get out of here, all you need to do is close the little X. And now when we add employee, all of our fields are here and folks will be able to enter new employees and new staff right on the web, which will then appear on the web and on our mobile app version. We wanna do the same thing with locations, so let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, we just have three locations here. The search bar, remember, is enabled. We click on collections. If you wanted to turn that off, since we don't have very many here, you could click the search bar under options or keep it listed. From here, we want to be able to add in an action. So remember, we're under collections, and we're going to come to the title bar and hit add action. And we're going to select a new form screen. Now, as you can see, there's lots and lots of different options here. You could send emails, you could delete things, dial phone numbers, you can add your back buttons or tab buttons. Again, this is a very basic overview of all that can be done with the web version of Glide Pages. So let's come down to the form screen 
We're going to rename this to submit new location. You want to be descriptive with these buttons so that it is clear what is taking place. And this we're going to do large overlay again. Remember, we do need to actually click on the button for that form to appear. Now this came through as staff, so we're going to go ahead and pick locations. And for this, everything came in as needed. So we just need to make sure we're adjusting our titles and options. So this is the office image. We'll call this office address. And office name. Go ahead and make sure those are required. And then click the X. Now when we click this, we have the option to add in a new office, add in new staff, and we can search. If you're looking for just a simple way to add in some detail from your mobile app on Glide Pages, this is how you would be able to do that. Hope this helps and can't wait to see what you build.